Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone's back from the coffee break. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, in front of all of you. I've come all the way from Calgary, Canada uh, for this talk, so I'm excited to be here. For some of you who know or may not know who CMG is, CMG Computer Modeling Group is a company based, headquartered out of uh, Calgary, Canada. And we've been in this industry for 40 years, solving um, industry's hardest complex uh, challenges. Uh, in terms of our employees and focus in areas, we're led by research and innovation. 50% of our employee workforce uh, is focused on research and development. And in that 50%, 75% of that, of those employees, employees that we have, are masters and PhDs in the, in the degrees of petroscience, uh, petroleum engineering, computer science, uh, geology, and so on. We have uh, 600 plus customers, including universities uh, around the globe. We have top uh, 18 out of top 20 uh, super majors around the world, uh, located in 75 plus countries. So needless, needless to say, a uh, very global company uh, with a large footprint of customers around the globe. So what I want to do is I want to talk about the global market trends. And then I'll, I'll try to triangulate back with what's happening from an Indian perspective as well. So if you look at the market trends, and three, three of them stand out, and it was very relevant based on the conversation that's happened this, this morning as well with a lot of uh, presenters talking about it. The first one is, look at the oil prices. It has gone through cycles in the last two years. Um, the oil price starts to go or pre-level to the pre-COVID um, pre-war levels, but then the gas prices are starting to soar as well. So there's a lot of that switching uh, that, that's in play. And if in terms of what's happening from oil and gas companies, the operators, they're, they're cash rich now, but that is not going back into investment in CapEx projects. It's going back to shareholders, it's going back to dividends, and the operators are very diligent <coughs> about where to spend money on, right? So the focus really is to how do I optimize what's already exist, right? L less on exploration, more on the production side that we're seeing globally right now. So brownfield asset development optimization is the key. The second is demand is resilient. I think now everybody believes that energy security and oil and gas is here to stay. In fact, as the GDP improves, as the economy starts to uh, get better, you see the demand actually increasing twice uh, in, the, in the upcoming decades. And the third part of that is energy transition, which is then how do you then try to go back to the net zero goals, focus more on the renewal sides. And there is all kinds of methodologies or who's leading the, leading the race in this area is, is quite out there. If you look at Europe, they are leading the race in terms of the renewables. Um, then you look at US and Middle East, the focus now goes back to shale increase in the production side of the things. And then we'll talk a little bit about India as well. Some of the presenters talked about it, that there's a long way ahead in terms of doing that. But these three market trends is now starting to shape up in terms of what the next decade will look like uh, from, from challenges and opportunities perspective. So where, where does India come in? When, when you talk about India, it's, it's kind of the, at the crossroads. If you think about where, where things are, right? So one of the largest consumers of energy, the country is um, among the top, top four countries in the world. And it's only going to increase the demand, right? So what's going to happen in terms of as the GDP starts to improve for India, the demand starts to grow further up. Then you have aging fields, right? That's a, that's a struggle. How do you make sure that you sustain the production and then you can cope up with the demand? From 1 million barrels a day of production to consuming 4, billion, 4 million barrels a day, which means 75%, 80% of that is coming from outside. So there's a lot of export happening uh, to meet up, the, meet up to the demand. And then there's a commitment by 2030 in terms of how the emissions would be reduced by 45% by 2030. Right? So that's, that's an ag aggressive task itself. And then we talked about in the morning as well that how India has made a commitment from a 2070 net zero uh, perspective. And if you start to combine, triangulate all these things together, you start to see that it's a challenge. It's a big Herculean challenge in terms of how do you get to achieve both sides together. So where does technology comes in? And the technology comes in uh, to make sure that digitization happens. The theme of this particular conference is digital transformation. Technology has made a lot of improvements in all the other verticals, all the other industries, and oil and gas industry is behind. 
So how do we make sure that technology is at the forefront and it's out there to either extend the life of assets, you talk about EOR techniques, you start to look at optimization, you look at AI machine learning, history match, and trying to, uh, trying to extrapolate the results, you try to break down the silos that happens in different departments. You have a reservoir department, you have a production department, the both they don't talk to each other. And as you start to make decisions, they are suboptimal decisions. Technology can play a big role in that, right? So, and uh, when it comes down to CMG, Computer Modeling Group, we sit at the center of that, and we've been doing it for years now, 40 years, in, in making sure that the companies around the world are taking advantage of that. So I'll give some examples. I'll give some use cases, the real life examples that, uh, that we have done in the past with a variety of our customers around the globe. This is a company in, in Canada, uh, ENP company, aging field, but was trying to improve the production. And through the impact of EOR, and they were using chemical injection, they were able to improve uh, the recovery by 27%. And if you start to put that into dollar amount, that becomes close to 40, 50 million dollars annual uh, savings on this side, right? And, and where computer modeling group software comes in is that you're able to figure out where to inject, how much to inject the chemical injections, and then you start the recovery process, right? So the whole idea of simulation is that you're mitigating your risk and you're modeling as much as possible in, in advance before you even start doing your CapEx um, investment. Another example I want to give you is in Oman. Our customer in Oman, which is well, we're dealing with a very complex asset, uh, an asset which has 20, 17 to 20 reservoirs, 127 wells, and they were doing gas injection uh, in this process. So again, another EOR technique to start to optimize the production. And in this, solving for this mega scale was an enormous task. But again, by leveraging the technology and making sure that the simulation is done in advance to again look at where to inject the gas, at what point do you want to inject the gas, and, and exactly where, how do you time it, that played a key role in terms of meeting the results from a contractual commitment perspective. The third example I want to give is energy transition, which has been the focus again of this uh, morning uh, discussion as well. CMG. When you talk about energy transition, there are multiple aspects of energy transition. The first and foremost that stands out is CCS, carbon capture sequestration and transportation. And then you have hydrogen as, as a form of energy, you've got geothermal. Uh, so there are multiple aspects of that, but again, this particular example was one of our strategic customers, Shell. They had a billion, do billion dollar CapEx project, so there was a lot at stake to make sure that the contractual demands are contained. So not only now you're figuring out how and where to store the carbon dioxide, how much to store, at what point do you want to store it, and then you don't want to make sure the leakage happens, right, because you don't want to be in bad press or you don't want to pay regulatory fines on this. And like I said, a billion dollar CapEx project is a lot at stake in this, in this regard. So again, by leveraging technology like Computer Modeling Group, they were able to save uh, the, the emissions from a carbon perspective equivalent of 250,000 cars off the road in a year. And that's, that's, that's a lot, right? So as we, as we talk about CCS, the expertise of CMG comes in because we've been doing, uh, using CO2 as a part of EOR 20 years ago. We've been writing white papers with Japanese companies 20 years ago. At the time, nobody talked about CCS. And now it has been front and center for everybody trying to, trying to do that. So it's, it's very important that the technology has been proven, has been, has been advanced further over the years in terms of emission reduction and what do you do with it. So back to the, what I said about CMG and its, and its history. 40 years of experience, 40 years of history, started as a research company back in 1980s, and then involvement with India as well. Involvement with India in 1980s from an ONGC partnership uh, perspective. CMG built up its brand reputation on solving one of the hardest problems in unconventionals. So you talk about uh, heavy oil, you talk about Canadian oil sands leveraging SAG-D steam as, as a way of, of extracting the oil and recovery process, moving that, that to heavy oil. Um, you look at Venezuela, all about heavy oil and how the, how the technology was used over there. Then came the U.S. shale in, in 2014 and optimizing that. And now you're talking about uh, CCS, 
again, doing it for 20 years, but now we're not stopping just over there. We want to make sure that we have the world's first integrated uh, reservoir integration with the wellbore. And we've been working with uh, leading uh, partners of ours in Konsberg, Konsberg Digital based out of Norway, where there was a GIP, there is a GIP created, where you have 10 plus companies participating like Total, Repsol, uh, Wintershell, uh, BP just joined as well. So the idea really is that we're not just solving the problem by ourselves. We are coming together as a team, the innovation think tank, and taking the innovation to the next level. That is the key in terms of how CMG starts to make sure there's an impact, there's a difference in, in the role that we play in solving some of the hard challenges. So we've been, we take a lot of pride in being the first from an innovation perspective, and then we try to make sure that the bar keeps on, keeps on going up as well. The other thing that I want to highlight over here, which is not in, in this slide, is as I mentioned about the silo between a reservoir engineer, engineering departments, and a production engineering departments, and as, as you talk about uh, brownfield asset optimization, you can't have suboptimal decisions. So CMG introduced a concept of IPSM, which is integrated production uh, surface network. And you want to make sure that the two departments talk to each other. You have a single model that connects the dots between the two, right? Because there is no room for suboptimal decisions, especially in the, the constrained world that, uh, that we live in. So a lot of first, that, that starts from, from CMG in terms of the innovation and the technology that we have put out there. Now I'll speak about India a bit, um, and the reason actually I'm here uh, all the way from Canada as well. Um, as, as you see, I'm, I'm, I'm Indian, I, I was born here, spent 20, 20 years of my life uh, growing up in India, then I left uh, to, to US for my studies and then built up a career in the technology field in US, Europe, and then in Canada. The thing that I heard this morning, this afternoon, about the talent, um, about making sure that we have technology partners in the country which can involve some of the talent that we have over here. So the commitment from CMG, now I took over in charge of being a CEO of CMG six months ago, and being an Indian, I want to make sure that this is my contribution back where we can have a dedicated center, center of excellence in Bangalore, in India, that we are opening up in February around the Energy Week time frame. And the idea really would be is to start that collaboration of the students participating in different internships with CMG, whether that's going to our Calgary office, whether that's participating in Houston, Dubai, Malaysia office, we have offices around the world. But it starts to create that breaking the silo that was kind of talked about this morning about academia and the industry. Right, CMG gets a lot of projects. We have close to 20, 30 interns every year uh, from around the world, but India is one area that we haven't uh, tapped in into. A lot of my, uh, my VPs, my leadership team is from ISM Dhanbad, from IITs as well. So a lot of opportunities in terms of building that skill and R&D center where we can make technology in India and we can start to leverage that. So I see a lot of students over here. I think that will be a great opportunity uh, in terms of what we can do and this is going to happen uh, in, the, in the month of February uh, when our center starts to get created. Um, so really creating leaders of, of tomorrow. The commitment is to put at least 10% of our workforce from an R&D perspective perspective over here, consulting, and all the other disciplines that, that's out there. And the idea is to foster the innovation. Right? So we want to make sure that the challenges that we talked about, and I think Mr. Ravi Bisra uh, talked in the afternoon where India was shown as, well, they're crawling. As you compare with US and Europe and other parts of the world, um, as, as an Indian, I, I take a, a disappointment in that, that we should not be crawling, we should be running. And if we have the technology which CMG does, and we are solving some of the hardest problems, whether that's in Brazil, whether that's in Argentina, whether that's in Middle East, we should be here in India uh, solving these problems and being part of it to take on the world. And that's the commitment CMG is making in terms of, in terms of solving that. So, so thank you for having me over here, and uh, looking forward to have multiple discussions on this. Thanks very much.